We are ready to do part four of this TARDIS square. I want to get it off my kitchen table, so I want to finish it up. I'm also trying to work on this. This is supposed to look like tire tracks. It's kind of cute, right? It's a bit thinner. Um, this is only the 20 windows, right? The other squares in my Father's Day, or sorry, scarves in my Father's Day crochet along are thicker. This one's just thin because it's the border, but I thought it would also make a pretty cute scarf for my toddler. So that is what I'm working on over there. But I want to get this one done and off my table and have that off my to-do list so that all four parts, the whole square, is going to be on YouTube. So here we are. We are on row 30. We're looking at the right side. The accent color is hanging out on the front. I'm going to do my chain three, which if you've watched my other videos, you'll know you can do other things. but. I'm not explaining that in this video because this video is all about finishing this square. I did my stitch in the front. Now I'm doing six in the back. I'm hoping I can do this really quick because if you haven't figured out how to do this, you can slow down the video. But if you have figured this out, then really this video is just sort of like a help along the way. So it doesn't need to be super long. All right, no more talking because I got to count. I have so many other projects that I want to get to. I want to get my mosaic stuff up. I have to get those um, tutorials for how to check your gauge swatch and how to do the mosaic. So many things, you know, I don't have time to be working on this TARDIS all the time. It says nine, we're doing nine in the front. One, two, three. Yeah, three is hard to count, hey? <laughs> Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. And nine. Two in the back. Did I miss? Did I don't? One in the front and stitch. There's our front one and our end. There we go. So 31, actually, this is a mistake here. I've done this before where I tried to work along the edge. I'm like, man, those stitches are really wonky. It's because it was not the right edge. So pay attention when you're flipping stuff around. Don't get confused because it doesn't really work. I mean, it worked a little, but not the way it really should have. One in the front. Make sure you're getting under both loops there. Four in the back. This has been sitting on my kitchen table in various stages of progress for like a couple weeks now. And I gets moved around, of course, but I would like it to just be done with. That's how I feel about a lot of my projects, actually. I really like starting projects. It's exciting and you get new yarn and you get to figure things out. And then I don't really like finishing them. They just take too long. Just be done already. Three in the front. Two in the back. One in the front. Two in the back. Five in the front. And someone is telling me today that I do crochet fast on these videos and I was kind of pleased. I'm like, yay, I'm a fast crocheter. I know that it's for a video. Sometimes that's not the greatest thing. But since this isn't really the teaching video, this is really just, I don't know what you call it. Not like the stitches are changing, you know? So it's just a, a crochet with me video, I suppose, eh? 
Uh, I'm going to move my screen up here. My pattern's up on the next chunk. If you have the pattern printed in front of you, I think you will also be moving. I don't think I've changed the pattern since making it. So here we go. Row 32, accent color is going to stay in the back. Two in the back. Two in the front, I guess if you watch these, you can kind of see how I separate the things, how I stick my hook under certain times, twist it this way, that way. Those might be the things that are helpful for watching the video. Other than that, I'm not really sure what's helpful about this video, except for that it's the whole square. So. The whole pattern is available if you don't want to use a printed PDF at all or view on your screen PDF at all, right? One, two, three, four, five, and six. One in the back. Six in the front again. string there. How'd I do that? Oops, I'm stuck on the white. Silly yarn. Sorry to twist you and pull you out of shape. Let's try that again. Don't catch your white. There we go. That does not happen to it very often. Now I don't know what can I write. One, two, three, four, five. We are doing six in the front, then one in the back, and then an end stitch. Yarn tail. One, two, three. Three in the back. One, two. Three, nine in the front, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. No, okay, now I don't know how to count today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know, in my head when I was looking back, I was trying not to count it loud, but I kept getting nine. One in the back. Two in the front. Oops, finish there we go. Back, front, back. The uh, whole square is falling off the table here. Hopefully you guys can still see what's happening. And in the back. Could always ask me to redo something if you need to. Um, might not get to it in the next two hours, but I would try my best to get to it as quickly as possible if there was something you really needed me to show you again. Row 34, two front. One back, one front. One 
going back to front. Eight in the back. Come on, yarn. There you go. Two. Three. Four. Five. Seven, eight. Maybe I should practice my counting skills in other languages. See how many languages I can count to eight in here. <laughs> Two in the front. Eh? De? How's that, eh? Making me go a little French. One in the back. Uno. And one in the front. Uno mas. I'm so bilingual. Trilingual, I just showed three. Yep. And stitch. I don't think you can count it as trilingual if you know how to count to three. Actually, I could probably count to 20. No, actually, I could probably count to 100. Hmm, that is tricky. I know I could do it in Spanish. I'm not as good in French, which is funny as a Canadian, right? But I lived in Mexico for three months, so I'm better at Spanish. Six in the front. Two, three, four, five, six, six. That's from my uh, schooling days. Everybody has to take French in school. Nine in the back. Oh no. This is my yarn ball. It's ginormous. Oops, there goes my camera. Sorry about that wiggly wiggly. Uno, dos, tres. Cuatro. Cinco. Is this going to totally mess up my subtitles? I think if they have like volunteer subtitle makers, and then they're going to have to put in French and Spanish, but it's not really a French and Spanish video. And maybe I need to not be so silly, hey? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the back. Then we do three in the front and end in the front. Just trying to entertain myself, you know? Sometimes I really like crocheting, but sometimes my brain is like, move faster, I want to be done faster. So I have to keep myself entertained. That's how I stay a little bit focused. Boop. And I like to make funny noises. That's part of being a mom, I think. A mom of little kids means I have to be silly. Silliness is a requirement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to keep that white tail out of the way here and do one in the back. Three in the front. One in the back. Six in the front. One, two, three. Sorry, I'm not a scratchy face. Four, five. Grab both loops. Six. One back, one front. One 
back one front again. So we finished, there we go. And another back front. Two in the back. And stitch. There we go. Pull it up. We're getting so close to the end. These little squares are pretty fun because the size is not too daunting. It's doable. It's not like a giant blanket, like a queen size blanket or something, right? Four in the back. One. Two, three, four, seven in the front, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and we will do two in the back. Oh, my yarn ball is ginormously in the way again. And two, one in the front, one in the back. Two in the front, one in the back. Better stay on camera again. Hello, crocheters. Oh, can you hear my husband? I don't know if you can, because it's just my headphones. You might have to get a little closer. And in the back. He wants to be famous, too. Hello, crocheters. Amazing debut. That's his amazing on camera debut. He has to go to bed. He has to work in the morning. He gets up super crazy early and drives far away. Okay, this is the exciting row because it says right side accent color B with a star, and it has a star because without the star, I uh, tend to ignore it because I'm so used to going front, back, front, back, front, back. The star reminds me, oh yes, this one's different, which means it's almost our last row. One in the front. Five in the back. bonus points to anybody who knows my husband's name. <laughs> I think there are places to find it out. You could stop me if you want. <laughs> but I think I wrote it in my Facebook group introduction, so it's not really that hard to find. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's right. One in the front, three in the back. Two in the front. Oops, missed. Try again. Three in the back. It's nice that he lets me just leave my yarn lying around for weeks on end. The couch is overtaken with yarn. The table is overtaken with yarn. The kid's playroom, we have a desk in there. It's overtaken with yarn. He does crochet too. He just doesn't have time to do it because he's so busy working. One front. 
one back, two front, and a nice little end stitch in that last window. We're getting close here. Grab my white. So 39, this is the last row for the white. In some of my patterns, which um, I'm not sure which ones I, mo the most recent ones, I put a little note after this that says you can cut it off. This pattern, it doesn't say that. I can see on my screen, it just goes on to the next. So chain three in the back, then just do 18 in the back. That gets us our crisp line that's at the top of the chart. If you've looked at the chart or if you've seen a finished square before, and it's just my personal preference on how I design my squares. It's going to be different in other designers, um, whether it's a square or a blanket, whatever they do. So I have seen also people use my patterns for the inside, but they actually do their border the way that they're used to. That's fine. I'm not offended by that at all. There are designers who do get offended by things like that. So they won't allow you to share those pictures in their groups because you haven't followed the pattern. And I get it. I, it is not the pattern, but to me, it's so close to the pattern, right? Like you just did your own end stitch. That's, I don't know. I guess in my opinion, if you change this and it said your name instead of TARDIS, then it's really your own design and it doesn't belong in my group for my designs because I didn't design that, but a border to me, uh, that's okay. But again, depends on the designer. So try to try to keep in mind when you're posting your things and where you're posting them. Of course, every crochet group on Facebook has different rules. Don't post a pattern, only share a link, links only in the comments, only one picture, only put extra pictures in the comments. Don't put pictures in the comments. If you have lots of pictures, just put them at the top, right? People have so many different rules. It gets so confusing sometimes. I try to be kind in my group. I hope that's what people feel welcome and that I am patient and kind. So if you make little mistakes, I'm not it's just going to boot you. We'll deal with it. Most of your mistakes are pretty small. This one is ending in the back. It's different. It's not on the front anymore because we want that straight bar on the side or on the top. I mean, so that's what the pattern says end in the back. You can see it. Now, if you wanted to, you can cut here. It doesn't say in this pattern, but my other ones do. They say cut and tie off. Um, I don't actually have scissors here. So I usually leave, I don't know that much ish and I do one slip stitch or chain I guess it's chain. I don't know what you call it I just pull it tight like that if you don't do that extra thing and you pull it tight it can make your last stitch kind of squash um, so that's why I do it that way and of course you weave in those tails after you can leave it if you want if you don't cut it and you have tails when you're working on this 40 row it doesn't matter which side your tails go on because you're going to be cutting them anyways. And then once it's just this tiny thing, you can pull it to wherever you need to be. So that, I guess, is a little tidbit that's technically not in the pattern, but we are going to do 19 in the front now. Now, for some reason, this last row always confuses me because I'm so aware that this is the wrong side, but suddenly my brain forgets what front stitches mean. And it always means the part that you can see the front of your work and the back of your work, the right side and the wrong side is different than a front stitch. The front stitch is always in front of what you can see. And I'm pretty sure most pattern designers do it that way. I, I don't know of any who design and make you think about which side you're working on. So something to keep in mind though, you might want to Look at the key on each pattern because they might have slight differences. Of course, I can only tell you what my patterns say. Not only because those are the ones I've designed, but copyright would prevent me from talking about other people's patterns. 
which means people can't make videos of my patterns either, right? So I have to be the one to do it, and I will work on them furiously. And I'm excited to get this one done because then I can get it off my table and I can go on to the next thing because there's always more. I'm always thinking about the next big thing. We're just finishing up the Father's Day crochet along in my Facebook group. I've posted the sixth scarf for free and I've got this bonus bar border scarf. That's the one that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So and now I'm like, well, what do I do next? But I do know that you guys need a little bit of time to finish what you're working on. So here you could cut and tie off if you like. It is finished. That's a complete square. I prefer having the border on it, not only because it helps make those stitches visible. It kind of wants to curl, right? So it does help with that. But it also makes it easier in my mind to join it after. Um, if you do one square with a border, you should do all of them so that that way they're the same. Consistency is key. So we chain one and I just keep going. I don't turn my work. If you want to turn your work, that's fine. It shouldn't change too much. Just chain one and turn and go go this way instead. I don't turn my work because I'm lazy. And now you're just putting two single crochets into each window. And um, works up pretty fast, I think. So I'm just going to keep going. And you don't really need to count. Um, if you wanted to count, you would see that it matches the amount of squares in the chart. So because this is a 20 window square, it's called TARDIS 20, and a 20 window square really has 41 in the chart, 41 squares. So that's just a lot of numbers that get confusing. My 20 window squares with my gauge usually end up being about 10 inches. So I got an 81 chart, which is a 40 window square, which ends up being 20 inches. <laughs> and then I have 41, win 41 square chart that I call a 20 window square that ends up being 10 inches. And I often confuse myself when I'm looking at my patterns and writing them up. I'm like, what am I working on? What number does this refer to? Why did I give myself so many numbers to deal with? All right, this last little window here, uh, I do have it in other videos, but I'll show you here. I just did two, then I chained two, and now I'm working on this side. And of course, now that I'm on this side, this window needs two in it again, because it counts as this wall. This little tail that's from doing my start, your tail might be more close to the corner if you did a regular chain and then back. I did the chainless foundation, so my knot gets moved over. I just, just go right over it. I don't worry about weaving that tail in. I just keep going and it gets crocheted over. Maybe I'll show you, I just hold it along the top. And it just gets stuck in there. I haven't had a problem. My kids are pretty rough with the things I crochet. I could show you some of the dolls I've made. They're looking pretty uh, beat up. But I, I don't... I'm sure some things that I've made are more precious. But most of the stuff I make is made to be used. It's made to be thrown in the washer. It's made to be dropped in the mud. <laughs> It's made to be loved and destroyed, essentially. So, I don't have a problem with those little tails. That's my long story. I can talk more because I'm not counting. I'm just going. I can also go relatively fast, I think. This Sometimes it's nice to have a project where you can just go. You just go back and forth and back and forth, and you don't really have to think. You don't have to count the stitches. And I am finding making all these patterns that I kind of miss that part of crocheting. And I, some people seem to be like shy of telling me that they're working on a project that's not interlocking. <laughs> I don't 
I don't think that's a problem. My brain needs a break too, you know? The white one we'll have to weave in because I um I don't I don't just crochet over the white. It would be too visible in my mind. Um and I have in the past also done it where um my last stitch here, if I did one single crochet in. I have done it where I do my next single crochet in both just to hold those corners then I do chain two and then in the both and then my second one is just in the blue window right and then I keep going and it just enables that corner to really be stuck instead of this one is like a little bit floppy it's um doesn't really matter to me on most of my projects this little floppy tab but have, other people have asked about what they can do to make that better and that is an option other designers have some very interesting ways of this final border where they're actually going into both um, I did try it actually on one of the first squares that I made but crocheted not designed it wasn't a, it wasn't a square I designed and I found it okay, but I didn't really like the way it looked at the end because you could see this, the, this blue yarn would then be going into the white. So you could see it. And I didn't really like that. So that's why I didn't design my border to be like that. I find this one takes less thinking and you can't see it. And I don't mind the small amount of gapping that you get to me. The gap is not big enough to worry about but um, if you don't like it you should look into doing something else that's kind of my my biggest tip for crocheting um, maybe it just comes from me being creative or not wanting people to tell me what to do which is maybe why I design my own patterns <laughs> some people like being told exactly what to do and they follow it to the letter of the law and I just don't I just want to do my own thing so, you know, so I had to make up the, my own border, although it's really not that complicated as you, easy peasy to do a border like this, in two, chain two, one, two, next window, And I don't really like weaving in the ends, but it is a necessary evil. Actually, way back when, when I was learning to crochet, I didn't have a needle that would work on thread. I, I tried to like raid the sewing stash that we had in the house and there was teeny tiny needles for like actual sewing, but no bigger ones. So I couldn't use a needle and I would just take my crochet hook and kind of pull it through. And it never looked that great. It was annoying to do. The tails would kind of stick out funny and you kind of trim the end off. But then the next time you see it and it's sticking out and you trim it and trim it and trim it and eventually you realize, oh, that's really short, right? <laughs> that's kind of my experience with weaving in the ends was, I don't want to do this, but I've seen the negative consequences of not doing it. So now I'm... I'm glad to weave them in. I just don't enjoy doing it, if that makes sense. So this is our last corner. So I did my two. It started with two, so I still need those last chain two. And then I join just with a slip stitch. And cut it. Oops, can't cut without enough fingers. These are not my, these are not the scissors I usually use. I just found them in the drawer. And then I like to pull it through and then I pull it back this direction so that it lays flat. And then I'll have to weave it in. Weave it in this way and that way or down and around in a square. This is kind of pretty, I think. Even though it's the wrong side. It's kind of nice. This side is better. You can see now that the edges, they sit flatter. They're a little bit better. And that is our square. We are done. I'm going to add it to my pile. 
I have a bunch of random squares of this size that I will sew together. It's going to be the weirdest blanket you ever saw. And I do want to work on the rest of my Doctor Who squares. I have a couple designed now. Um, they're free because of copyright issues. I can't actually profit. So I'm glad that I'm still allowed to share them. That's really, I mean, it would be sad if I drew them up and nobody was allowed to see them but me, you know? So this one, to me, doesn't belong in the Doctor Who blanket because I want to make a giant square with the TARDIS in it. And it seems weird to have two TARDISes. So I might have two TARDISes in my other random blanket. We have lots of blankets around here, you know? Now that that one's done, I can get back to this because it's not long enough. I have only this much yarn in these colors, so it's not going to be as long as a blanket. But considering I didn't actually make the Father's Day scarves, I don't have a blanket to join it to anyways. So it'll just be a scarf for my son. And I had lots of random yarn I have to weave in all these tails, but that's how it goes. Uh, yeah, so I hope to be getting that mosaic video up soon. I have a bowl here. Look at my very fancy bowl of my mosaic hell. <laughs> it's um, starting and trying to figure out where the pattern belongs and whether I can use scrappy yarn, you know, I don't know. Maybe you guys need a video on that too, and I'm using even a bigger hook. So, that's what you have to look forward to. Subscribe, come join me in my Facebook group. We've got like 1,500 people there, but obviously not 1,500 people see the posts, and that's not that many people talking. The last giveaway I did, we had about 200 people post, uh, comment, and enter. So, um, come join, add your voice, show us your pretty stuff. And I will get videos made for you guys.